Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran Church this morning. Our readings are a little scattered this morning, but I'll give you a sneak preview of the one that I'm going to preach on, the gospel reading. Sorry, but life eternal is not fair. Please stand for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to share the peace with one another. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Today, for our first song, we'll be singing God with us. In this song, I really just like to reflect and think of how he is with us, no matter where and what we do. Breath. 
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Where are you, Lord? You give life. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath, it's your breath. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We reflect for a few moments on our sins and our sinfulness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have left undone and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding presence and care that confidently we may live according to your word, learning of you at all times and ever growing in your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Good morning. The Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. reading is Philippians 1, 12 through 14, and 19 through 30. I want you to know, brothers, that what ha- has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. And this is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that it is far better. But to reign in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ because of my coming to you again. 
Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you, and that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here at Heidel all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord.
invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Come on up. How are you guys this morning? Good. I want you to pretend that I have a garden, okay? So I've got a garden, and what grows in gardens? So, fr- yeah, plants, fruits, and vegetables. Do any of you have gardens? You have a backyard? Sort of. That's actually what I have. What grows in backyards? Different plants. Shall we ask your parents what grows in backyards? What grows in backyards? Weeds. (laughs) It seems like your parents and I are thinking the same thing. So I have a garden, and often in gardens, weeds grow up too, and I need somebody to help me pull the weeds. Are you good at work? Can you work hard? Do you think your mom and dad would let me hire you for eight hours? You don't know? Okay, well, let's say they did, okay, in this pretend world. I hire you for eight hours, and we'll ignore minimum wage because you're younger, so I'll give you a dollar an hour. Five dollars an hour. So I'm going to give you $40 for working the whole day in my garden, okay? But you start working, and I can see that there's a lot more weeds than maybe you can pull. So I'm going to need more help. Would you also work in my garden? Okay. Oh, and what's his name? Her name? Mirabella. Mirabella. So you and Mirabella will work in my garden? Will you come and work for six hours? Okay. I just realized that there are too many weeds. Can I get you to come and work in my garden for two hours? Okay. Okay. Will you come and work for one hour, you guys? No? Yes? Okay. (laughs) And at the end of the day, so you worked for one hour, you didn't work, you worked for two hours, you worked for six hours, and you worked for eight hours, so I'm giving you $40, and I'm giving you $40, and I'm giving you $40, and I'm giving you $40. How are you feeling? She's looking at me like something's wrong. What's wrong? Did you, did you work all day? And you got paid how much? $40. How long did she work? An hour. And she got paid $40. How long did she work? Only two hours. And she got paid... Is this feeling like kind of weird to you? If I asked them, what do you think they would say? That's not fair. That's not fair. But that's what happened in today's Bible reading. Jesus tells the story. A man has a vineyard, which is like a garden that grows grapes. And he went out and he hired a whole bunch of people to work all day. And then he went back later and hired more people. And he went back later and hired more people. And he went back almost to the end of the day and hired more people. But he paid them all the same. Now, that's not actually a story about how we should treat people who work for us. It's a story, it says, about the kingdom of heaven. That is how God brings each one of us to salvation. And it's not fair, is it? That like some people can be Christians all their lives and they get to go to heaven and other people maybe become Christians later and they get the same heaven as a reward. It's not very fair, is it? No. But is heaven about how much you do No. How does anybody get into heaven? Yeah, by believing in Jesus. And what did Jesus do? That's right. He died on a cross. Mirabella is going to help us. Mirabella is going to point to a cross. I want everybody else to point to the cross too. No, there's a big cross back there and a cross there. Thank you, Mirabella. It was not fair that Jesus died on a cross for you and me so we could go to heaven. But he did it anyway. And you know why he did it? Because he loves you so much. That much. And thankfully, he also rose from the dead. Will you fold your hands and pray after me, please? We'll we'll ask the adults to pray, too. Dearest Jesus, thank you for your life, 
for your death on the cross and for your resurrection. Thank you for giving me a place in God's kingdom and give a place to everyone else as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You guys can return to your seats or go with Miss Tasha. You can probably guess the text for this morning's sermon. Matthew chapter 20, specifically the end of verse 15. Or do you begrudge my generosity? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Life's not fair. I suspect a few of you have used that line on your children, and I suspect a few of you have had that line used on you by your parents. It's a great line, right? It says, look, the world is not fair. Unfortunately, I wish it were. I wish that everybody got paid the same for the same amount of work. I wish that the same bad things and the same th good things happened to the same people who were as good and as bad as one another. But life's not fair, unfortunately. So get used to it. If we read Jesus' parable, it looks like the kingdom of heaven is not fair either. But there's a difference. When it comes to the kingdom of heaven, that is a good thing. Jesus tells this parable. A man has a vineyard. He goes out early in the morning. Who is likely to be in the marketplace early in the morning looking for work? The industrious, the assiduous, those who are ready to go. So he hires them, a denarius for a day. Apparently there's more work than can be done, so he goes back a little later, hires more people. Goes back a little later, hires more people. He goes back yet later. Notice it is uh, the third hour, and then the sixth hour, and then the ninth hour, and then the eleventh hour. Who is standing in the marketplace at the end of the day waiting for work? Yeah, the ones who didn't get up in the morning, maybe who aren't as industrious, maybe who sort of want to say, well, I tried to get work, but I couldn't get work. You know, I went over to the marketplace, and he hires them. The end of the day comes, and he has them paid, starting with those who worked for like, what, an hour, two hours, and they get a denarius. And you can see the minds of those who were hired at the beginning of the day working, maybe there's a bonus. And it goes from maybe there's a bonus to, well, I deserve a bonus, so that when they also get the same amount as those who worked only a short time, they are grumbling about not getting what they deserved. And the master of the house says to one of them, friend. I take that word friend to be serious. You toward whom I have affection, you whom I am willing to help. Didn't we agree to a denarius a day? Take, take what you deserve and go. And then he ends with, do not or do you begrudge my generosity? We'll come back to that line. And then Jesus closes the story with these words, so the last will be first and the first last. Those words put this story in the bigger context of Matthew chapter 19 and chapter 20. In fact, the very first word of today's reading, for, because, links it right back up to what happened before. And chapters 19 and 20 of Matthew really paint a, a weird picture of the kingdom of heaven, or perhaps they paint a picture of the kingdom of heaven as being weird compared to how you and I think. For example, chapter 19, verse 13, children come to Jesus so he can bless them, and the disciples rebuke the people. But Jesus says these wonderful words, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Not to the important, not to the significant, not to those who are productive, not to those who are independent as the kingdom of heaven belong, but rather 
to the unimportant, the insignificant, the unproductive, those who are totally dependent on other people. And then we get the story of the rich young man, a man who comes to Jesus and said, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus says, what are the commandments? The man goes through them and says, I've kept them to this day. And then Jesus says, one thing you lack, give all your possessions away and come follow me. The man goes away sad. And then Jesus says, only with difficulty, he says to his disciples, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And then a very famous quote, Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard it, they asked, well, so who can be saved? With God, all things are possible, Jesus says. To which Peter replies, we have left everything and followed you. I love it. You told that rich young man to leave everything and follow him. And he walked away sad. But Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus says, Truly I say to you in the new era, the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. But many who are first will be the last, and the last first. Sound familiar? It's just the reverse of what we heard at the end of today's reading. And the very next word is the first word of today's reading. For the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a house who went out in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. So somehow this parable is supposed to help us see how it is that some who are first will be last and some who are last will be first. After today's reading, Jesus once again predicts that he as the Son of Man will be delivered up to death and will rise from the dead, which in their heads has to be completely, totally backwards because he's the Messiah. He is not supposed to die. He's supposed to bring victory upside down and backwards. And then we get the story of the two disciples, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who comes to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, when your kingdom comes, can you let my son sit at your right hand and your left hand, seeking glory for her sons? Jesus responds, can they drink the cup that I'm about to drink? Oh yes, Jesus, they can do that. Well, they may or may not do that, but it's not mine to give away who will sit at the right and at the left. But, verse 26, whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Today's reading sits in that context about the kingdom of heaven, that is, about God's reign in this world by which he brings us sinful human beings back to himself. And it's all weird and backwards. It's not fair, this kingdom of heaven, that those who are unimportant, insignificant, unproductive, and totally dependent on others should be the ones to receive all of the gifts. It's not fair that those who worked hard all day should receive the same amount as those who came later. It's just not fair. But then we bump into the words of the master of the house. Do you begrudge my generosity? Are you going to tell me that you want me to be the kind of master of the house who is not generous, who only gives people what they deserve, who only gives people what they earn? Think about life like that. Think about a kingdom of heaven in which you get only what you deserve, which is, according to the catechism, nothing but everlasting death and condemnation. It is not fair. It is not fair that Jesus gave his life on the cross for you to win a place in God's kingdom for you. But he did it anyway because he loves you. 
It is not fair that God the Father should give his only begotten Son into death to open the kingdom of heaven to you and all believers. But he did it anyway out of love for you because he is not a God who holds against each person every bad thing they've done. No, he's a God who says to the wicked, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord, as we heard from Isaiah. Why? So that the Lord may have compassion on him. For the Lord will abundantly pardon. God is a generous God, a God who gives, gives more than we deserve, far, far more, who gives more than we could ever earn, far, far more. And that is why the kingdom of God is unfair. Because in the end, if it were fair, you would not have a place in it, nor would I. The kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who paid his workers unfairly because he is a generous, compassionate master. The kingdom of heaven is not fair, and that's good because it means that you and I have a place there. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We confess our faith in this generous and compassionate God in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was made man, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the offering. Please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father in heaven, we give you thanks that you have called us by your Holy Spirit to follow Jesus, although we do not deserve it and have not earned it. We thank you for your great generosity in him. Through us, through your church, through missionaries, through anybody who believes in Jesus, call others to follow Jesus, that they too may receive forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we pray your blessing on all who serve as missionaries, both in the United States and around the world. Grant them boldness to proclaim the good news that there is salvation in Jesus Christ and no salvation apart from him. Support them protect them from all harm and danger, and grant that whatever dangers they face, they boldly proclaim Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father in heaven, we give you thanks for all those who work and serve at this congregation and school. 
Bless their work. Grant that as they teach children about your son Jesus, children's faith will be strengthened. Grant that as they teach children and lead children in a variety of ways, the children will learn how Christians live and see the good news in action. And finally, send your Holy Spirit to the children and their families that their faith may be strengthened and that those who do not yet believe may also come to faith and receive forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we pray your blessing on the continuing call process for this congregation. Give the members of the congregations patience as they await the day when they can issue a call. Give them joy knowing that you are providing for them in the meantime and that in this process, pastors are learning more about their own congregations and this congregation. And finally, gracious Father, in your time, bring a man here to serve as full-time pastor. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father in heaven, we ask you to be with all who are in any need of any kind. Watch over the under and unemployed, the homeless, those who struggle with mental illness, those who are sick or suffering. Extend your hand of healing to them, provide them all they need to support this body and life, and use us, your people, to share with them how much you love them in Christ. Grant that your Holy Spirit will be active when they hear the word, so that they may be strengthened in faith, or if they are not believers, come to faith in your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we ask your comfort for all those who have lost loved ones, whether through disease or illness or old age, or through natural disaster or by human sin. Bring comfort, surround them with faithful family and friends. And for those who died in faith, grant that their loved ones will find joy and comfort in the knowledge that all who die in Christ will rise in Christ on the last day and live forever. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, gracious Father, we pray for all who will come to this altar today. Grant that those who receive the body and blood of your Son do so in repentance, trusting not in their own works for salvation, but only and always in your generous, compassionate forgiveness given to us through Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. Grant that they may be strengthened in faith so that they may withstand the attacks of the evil one and their own conscience and sinful flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Jesus Christ, 
who has resurrected me. Sing and praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Sing praise forever to the King of kings. Sing praise forever to the Yeah. 
stand for prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you. 
peace, serve the Lord.